chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Amen. We will call legends to come and read the word of the Lord. Amen. Today I'm reading the first chapter, chapter 3, 1 verse 10. Then the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before and and the word of the Lord was read in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time, while Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I do not call, lie down again. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. Then he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for he did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he calls you. Then you may say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as out of the times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is. Amen. 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 Sister Sandra, she's got a special thing to do with you this morning. Amen. Shall we welcome her? Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Do give it your best. 
special. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. So our first of all, we'd like to welcome, I don't see, is David here? Yeah. David, I'd like to welcome David. David, come on down. You're the first contestant. to expect or to fulfill something just as we hope for Jesus to return a Bible quote which I remember briefly says but for those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength as we can infer hope including faith are two key fundamentals of religion because of hope we pray because of hope we thank God because of hope we go to church, and because of hope, we know that Jesus will come. Daniel had faith and hope that he would be safe and protected from the lion in the den. When a Christian follows the path of holiness without faith or hope, the devil, Satan, can easily swipe one away from God. Like one. Let's say, like now we have destructions of the world, confusing Christians who have weak hope in the Lord. Even the Christians with the strongest hope get confused with the truth and lies of society. For example, when I was, when I was, at, when I was at school, I had a test on Monday, but due to me being ill, I wasn't in. So the next day, I went into school to take the test. But since I don't know what happened, but since because they think I cheated or got the answers from someone else, they said that I had to take a different test from which was given to others. So, because of hope, I prayed to God and said, because they gave me a higher test, because which I'm not used to. So, I prayed to God and I had hope, knowing that I would pass the test. Then, on the next day, Tuesday, during lunchtime, I was given the test 60 minutes, paper one and paper two. And I passed it with flying colors. So now I say, we, we do not have an excuse. We now know what hope does to spiritual growth to Christians. And now I say, keep on hoping, for we will not, so for we will see God again. Thank you. makes us not ashamed. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of salvation to those that believe. Amen. Thank you, David. That was wonderful. Thank you. Okay, our next contestant is none other than Sister Ali. Um, today I'm going to be talking about prayer, reading the Bible, and my relationship with God. Growing up in full gospel hall, we always used to sing a song in crash that goes, read your Bible and pray every day if you want to grow. So from an early age, I was aware that praying regularly and understanding the Bible were fundamental parts of Christianity. Before COVID, I would pray when I remembered, <clears throat> which was unfortunately not very often, mostly in church, with family, and occasionally on my own. However, things changed when we were in lockdown and I thought about my current relationship with God and how there were clearly things I needed to improve on. That's when I began praying more and imparting my knowledge about my faith from the help of a range of Christians all over social media. I had previously given my life to Christ during either 2018 or 2019 Big Church Day Out Festival where Christians and non-Christians were given the opportunity to do so. It was truly a, it was truly an unforgettable experience. However, the first lockdown truly put into perspective how my life had not really changed since I gave my life to Christ. Amen. At this point, I realised that not only did I need to pray more, but also read my Bible too. I'd always had the Bible app on my phone, but sadly, it always sat there unused and untouched. Fortunately, my mum showed me all the amazing features the Bible that had to offer, and my favourite part was the street. 
This encouragement to use my Bible at least once a day so my daily streak will continue to increase while still reading God's Word. It would pain my soul any time I lost my Bible streak as it meant I'd miss the day of interacting with God's Word and had to start all over again. Overall, becoming closer to God at the peak of the pandemic made lockdown a lot more bearable. Since I'm not perfect, there were good and bad days of becoming the best Christian, but ultimately the bad days were a step forward for my life post pandemic. Therefore, leading me to give my life to Christ properly on August the 13th, 2020, for the second and final time. I felt like a whole new person, even though to others I was still loud and energetic, but within my heart I truly knew I was a child of God. In January of 2021, I decided to embark on the challenge to read the whole Bible. I knew it wasn't going to be a quick and easy process, but I was determined to at least give it a try. I aim to read a chapter or more a day, and currently I'm in Psalms. If I continue to grant this book, I hope to finish the Old and New Testament by October 2026. I will usually set myself many deadlines for each book less than a month for shorter books and more than a month for longer books. This has motivated me to keep on going as I have learned so much already. Some days I read chapters after chapters till late at night and this makes me feel more and more connected to God. As much as I love reading the Bible, praying will always be my favourite. Once I started praying more, well, I haven't stopped and it's become like second nature to me. I would always hear pastors and other Christians talking about the importance of prayer all the time, but it was only until I came across a particular Bible verse that I took the acts of prayer more seriously. In the GMT Bible version, in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, it says, Ask the Lord to bless your plans and you will be successful in carrying them out. Such a simple yet powerful verse in which my takeaway was praying for God's blessing before doing anything. So that's what I did. Every night I prayed about the day ahead and the day that had just come to an end. It became a good habit to the point where I felt at peace knowing my life, knowing God was in control and everything that happened, whether good or bad, was in his hands. Now I saw God as not only a father but as my best friend that would listen to all my problems no matter what. Before, I would keep problems to myself and really even tell family and friends. But now I always confide in God Himself because without Him, I'm capable of doing nothing at all. And with that, prayer became my coping mechanism, no matter what emotion I was feeling. Even on the days I was too tired to read my Bible, there was always time to pray until I fell asleep. I can talk to God about anything, I know how my day went, appreciating what he's done and just having hope for the future. Additionally, by putting my hand on test papers and saying a quick prayer before the exam began made me feel safe knowing that what surrender happened was all part of God's plan. Moreover, the main message I want to get across in this congregation is that prayer is more effective than it seems. It feels like the weight has been lifted off your shoulders knowing that God, the one who made you and can therefore trust the most, will always listen to you and will never say that your problems are burdens, whereas some human beings can. I hope that after this insight into part of my relationship with God, you will not only see me as a loud and energetic girl, but the girl who is going to continue to blossom as time passes. Amen. Keep the listening.
and how that the world is changing negatively. No longer a thief, it is corrupt. No more composure, these people are rather erupt. Peace is deceased, we're losing our conduct. And it's all up in our faces, but still we won't interrupt. I woke outside another fighting side. Groups of people hustling with another crime inside. Guns at night within their air, they're rolling in the night. At the night, but I pray God brings them to the light. They think they're all irreprehensible for their actions, not trying to be sensible. With their guns, because people aren't defendable. And they're rolling, they think that it's indefensible. The bullets are dispensable. It's disgusting to see people in the news looking like you and me, bringing us down as a whole community. Another person locked up, and they don't know where's the key. They rather listen to decrees. They go to uni and gain all of the degrees. Living in fantasy, can't take the reality. Now they will actually know that life's not so free. So every 
everybody has a safe place and all of them are different. Like my mom's safe place could be the kitchen and that one's safe place could be the living room. But we're, but we're talking about my safe place. And my safe place is really special because it's my bedroom. My safe place is my bedroom because there are lots of hiding places and it's very cozy and small. My room has butterflies on my wall, so when I sleep I dream about them as I'm on the grassy field surrounded by hundreds of rings of butterflies. In my closet I have thousands of clothes, but I don't, but I don't wear most of them. But, but my closet is a great hiding spot because I can hide behind all the clothes and no one will see me. In my room, I have two big shelves but put together to store my books and angels' clothing. And every night, I get a book and read before bed. Thank you for your time. Everything 
they said here, they wrote it themselves, and some of the uh, words they have said today, I mean, we can just go home with that. Wonderful and amazing. So thank you, all of you. What we're doing is not so much about competition, it's about bringing out what is in them. And we know that God has created all of us with gifts, as we have been studying in the last uh, few months. So all these young people have something in them. But me sitting here, it's difficult for me to know what is individual gifts, unless we give them opportunity Amen. to express themselves. So the idea behind all this is as we explore do, doing different things, different activities, we will be able to discover what God has given to each and every individual. Amen. And once we do that, and when we come to church, when we come together, and we bring up our gifts and talents, then we are able to build the body of Christ that God is expected for us as a church. And this morning, I am on Legend was reading for us from Samuel and chapter 3. And there's a nice story there. And the title is just about Be a Good God. Be a good guide. Because all that we are trying to do is to guide these young people. And we are not just guiding them anyway. We want to be a good guide. Because if you are not a good guide, what you are going to do is you are going to lead people astray. And it's not just the young people. Everyone around us, we are a guide to them. And we are showing them the right way, where God wants us to go. And that is what we are talking about as a good God. So as we are reading this morning, if you put it on the screen for me, we read about someone. It's a very, very common uh, passage of scripture. And in that someone, I will just talk about two short stories. And the first one is, no, the first one is Samuel chapter 3. We talk about Samuel being a young person. And as a young person, he actually, what did he even know what was going on around him? Because he, his mom had given him a way to go and serve in the temple, in the presence of God. So he went and lived with Eli. And the Bible says that one day, this young boy was sleeping. And God came to talk to him. And he says, and it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place. And when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see. And before the Lamb of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, Here I am. And gone. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call you. Lie down again, and he went and lay down. I have a lot of respect for Eli, for who he is, and how he responded, and how he composed himself. I want you to put yourself in the position of Eli, because I know many parents today, and a young person is sleeping. And in the middle of the night, he ran from his or her room and came and said, Dad, Mom, you're calling me. I know what many of us, our reaction will be. Sending them back to sleep is not enough. 
but the ones that will follow. What is coming over you? Did you have a lot of food? And the people say a whole lot of things. And how we will shout at them? That's the first time. And then the second time he says, the second time someone came back and said, you are calling me. And I can imagine the insults that we made and everything we will be saying to them. Sometimes a little patience can change situations and open doors. But sometimes we do not have that. Eli was so composed. At that particular point in time, Eli did not actually know what was going on. But he sent the boy Samuel back to sleep again. And it happened at the same time. And at this point in time, he realized that no, something unusual is going on. Don't forget that at the beginning of the reading, we are, uh, the Bible is saying to us that the word of God was rare in those days. It was uncommon. God wasn't speaking to people. But God came and speak to the boy Samuel. How many times have we taught that way that, I mean, and dismiss young people? Sometimes we think that it's all about us. It's all about our reader adults and what God can use us for. But what we are seeing here today tells us that God can use anyone. It does not matter their age. And the fourth time, God came. So the third time, he I told him, when he comes again, say, speak, for your servant is listening. He realized that something was going on. It was a unique situation. Something was, something unusual was happening. And God came back and spoke to someone. What am I trying to say? I started talking about being a guide. We are all Eli in some way. All of us have opportunity to guide not just our young people, but the people around us. Are we spiritually sensitive enough sometimes to realize what we are doing, where we are going? And when God is speaking, can we do that and guide our young people? Guide the people around us and direct them to the right path. That was what Eli was doing. You are Eli to your young people. You are Eli to your friends. You are Eli to your colleagues. You are Eli to your community. We are the people God has chosen to guide others. And I'm so pleased and happy that we have come together to guide these young people in the right way. Everything they're doing, what they're telling us, is showing us and they're telling us about how sensitive they are to God and their relationship with Him. And that's most important. But we also have an important role to play. Not just to feed them, not just to clothe them, not just to give them shelter, but also to guide them in their spiritual journey. And that's not the end of the story. This is a, a situation with one young person. And I'm telling you another one about another young person. When we go to 1 Samuel chapter 17, it's another big epic story that all of us know. I he was referring to going to Sunday school. When we go to Sunday school, all of us will learn a lot of things and some common stories from the Bible. And this is not an exception. 
the story of David and Goliath. So the Israelites and Philistines are in a battle. They are fighting. And they are coming in different, in opposite direction. So every year and then, Goliath, the giant, will come and taunt the Israelites. Jesse has sent, not the Jesse, has sent his son, David, who was a, a shepherd, to go and give some food to his brothers who were part of the battle and bring some news. And when he went there, he saw what was going on. All the other people, the army and people who have been trained, they were so afraid. They were scared. No one wanted to stand up and be counted. And James said, this cannot happen. So he made an inquiry. How can I go and stand? against this man. How can I go and fight? How can I go and represent my people? They showed him. And it was interesting one that the reason I'm telling you this is verse 38, when everything had sorted, he went to the presence of King Saul. He himself was running away. And he said, I want to fight this giant. How can you do that, David? And he said, when I'm tending the flock, when the bear and the tigers and all the wild animals come, I fight with them. And the Lord who will rescue uh, me from their hands, this same God will rescue me from the hands of this uncircumcised Philistine. Yes. So he stood up. But he was interested in this year. And we read from verse 38, and he says, so Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk. For he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with this. For I have not tested them. So David threw them off. What are we learning here? This man is afraid. He cannot go and face the giants. He's running away. But he thinks that his armor can do something for David. He thinks that his armor is the one that's going to help David to win the battle. So he's giving his armor to David. How many times have we played over this? Or have we done the same thing? It's not about the young people and what is in them. But what we can and how can we can send them to be. There's one thing about guiding, and there is another thing about replacing what they have with your own. And sometimes that's what we do. We want to change them, and we want them to be like we are. It doesn't work like that. There's something already there. That can help them to survive, yes. to win the battle. Yes. It's not about your armor. It's not how you clothe them with your armor. That is not what we have to do. There's something already there. When God created them, each of them had their gifts and their talents. Yes. And it's not just about their Christian lives. Because I know for many of, of us as parents, Sometimes it's about what we want our young people to achieve, who we want them to become, rather than what God has placed in them and what they want to achieve. So sometimes we take that person, that human, out and we place them with our own. We are doing so. 
We are not doing ELA. What we have to do is to do ELA, not doing so. So what I'm telling you today is, we guide our young people, but we do not replace what they already have. They have gifts, and they have talents, and it's amazing what they can do and what they can achieve. What that we have to do is to be there for them. And as a church, we're trying to do that. And when you are home with them, wherever you are with them, you also try and be an healer. Don't take what they have and replace it. Because you want them to be a medical doctor or you want them to be a prime minister. Okay. All of them have to believe that's what God created them to be. But sometimes they can do something in society or would they are like that nobody will even maybe recognize, but they will find that fulfillment in their lives. And that is what is important. We do not find satisfaction and fulfillment in what other people are saying about us. It's not about faith. That is not what we're talking about. We find fulfillment and satisfaction from what God has already given to us. So we are here to help them. And when you are there, also help them. Be an Eli, don't be a soul. Amen. So before we pray, it's interesting. It's <laughs> uh, interesting. Okay, so as I said at the beginning, from the beginning, all of us are winners. So let's have for all of us. And we want to also assure you that we make sure that our judges are very, very neutral, so they cannot have their young people here. They cannot relate to them in any way, and do not, they do not work for them. That's why myself, Sandra, Sister all of us who work with them stay out to be a judge. Okay? That's why Brother Francis is not a judge. <laughs> we know about all the prices we are going. <laughs> okay, so I can tell you that it's free and it's fair, like Ghana election. <laughs> okay, uh, without wasting my time, the reason why we are having that difficulty discussing with Sister Sandra is the second place is tied. And what I was thinking is, so what we do with the prizes? Okay, right. And I hope that Brother Francis is going to spare me and the church council who are here and uh, accept that you will give me extra 30 pounds. So I'm not out of pocket. Yes. Do you agree with me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay, so without wasting my time, the first place is David Fernandez. So, 
said, you have ten pounds each from me. Because you also did it very We discuss today, we are called guides. We are guiding the people of God. We are guiding people into the kingdom of God. 